Alright, the good nerve Shabbos and the good nerve Yantiv. I'm kind of out of it. It's Erev Yantiv, Erev Pesach, Erev Shabbos. I'm on my way home from the mikveh. Uh, but I figure, you know, it's always good to learn Torah. So I figure we could learn the Rambam, Hilchus Chametz and Matzah. And uh, learn together a little bit. So the Rambam says there are eight mitzvos that are related to the laws of Chametz and Matzah. That does, that's not all of the mitzvos of Passover, but specifically the mitzvos related to Chametz and Matzah. He said there are three positive and five negative commandments. The first one is a negative commandment that you should not eat Chametz on this day Erev Pesach, the 14th of Nisan, from noon on. That's a biblical commandment in order to distance us from violating the biblical commandment. The rabbis said that two hours before one should stop eating chametz. And, and the question is how do we define an hour? So it's about two hours before noon actually more like three hours before that we stop eating chometz two and a half hours before and then it's about an hour again about an hour and 15 minutes or so before uh, that we have to get rid of our chometz by that time and then the actual that, and that's those those are rabbinical laws the actual biblical law is from noon on you're not allowed to eat chometz Second mitzvah, it's a positive mitzvah, la hashbis sohar biyamar to cause leavening agents to rest on the 14th day of Nisan. We fulfill that um, through declaring chametz to be batam. The third is not to eat chametz all seven days of Pesach, starting from tonight ending the seventh night after that. Of course, rabbinically, outside of the Holy Land, it's eight days instead of seven days. Uh, in the Holy Land, it's only seven days. This year is going to be interesting. They're probably going to have to still be Chabot stick, because it could still be Pesach stick in Eretz Israel because they, um, Shabbos is in the Chutzlar, it's the last day, and in Israel is Yisrucha. Um, the fourth is not to eat even a mixture of chametz all seven days. And the Rambam is going to explain that that's on a lower level of prohibition. It's still absolutely prohibited, but it's much more strict to eat actual chametz than to eat something that's a mixture of chametz. Fifth is that you should not see chametz all five, all seven days, and again eight days outside of the Holy Land. And what does that mean? We'll, we'll discuss what that means. The sixth is you should not find chametz all seven days and eight days of Chutzlaris. Seventh is to eat matzah, a positive commandment. To eat matzah on the first night of Pesach. It actually says here the nights of Pesach. And so again, in Eretz Israel, it's only the first night. Outside Eretz Israel, it's both nights. And the eighth positive commandment is to tell over the story, the narrative of the Exodus. On that night. Now the question is, what happened to Mara? Where's the bitter herbs? So the answer is, when the Rambam has the uh, the Hilchos Korban Pesach, that's where he discusses the bitter herbs, because the bitter herbs are only. Uh, 
mitzvah in where the temple is standing while we're eating the Korban Pesach. Today, we partake of the bitter herb only as a memorial of what happened in ancient times. So let's just start and read a little bit. We don't have that much time, but I'm driving home. We'll do something. Rabbam says, Kol Oichel Kazai is Chomitz, Mepesach, Mitchilas, Bel Chemisha, also at Sofio, Pachad, Ve'ezra, Benisa, Ve'bezid, Chayev Kores. Says, anyone who eats Chomitz, a Kazai is a Chomitz of Chomitz, an olive size of Chomitz, on Passover, from the beginning of the night of the 15th, meaning tonight, Till the end of the 21st day of Nisan, if he eats it on purpose, meaning he has in mind that he's doing this, it's not out of ignorance, but it, it, he, it's someone they have in mind that they know that they're not allowed to do this, and they're going to do it anyway because they just don't care, or they, they do care, and they specifically... <laughs> want to commit a sin. So in that case, he, is a chay, he or she is chay, a Jew is chay of kares. Kares means that you're cut off from the Jewish people. What does that mean exactly? Is it a spiritual issue? Is it a physical curse? Is it a, um, is it a national issue? different interpretations exactly what this word curries means, but obviously it's pretty bad, whatever it is. It's a very, very bad sin. Because it says you should not see for you any leavening agents in all of your borders. And it says you should... Oh, sorry. And why? Because it says... Anyone who eats chametz, anyone who eats leavened bread, will be cut off. Meshogeg, chayev korban chatas kavua. If he does this by accident, then he has to bring a sacrifice which is um, a, a sin offering of a set sin. A set sin offering. And that it's the same whether one eats comments or if he um, makes it into some kind of a powder and drinks the comments. Next issue, the next halacha is that chametz on Pesach is prohibited, and the prohibit and it's prohibited to have any benefit from it, because it says you should not eat chametz, which means it should have no permission to be eaten. So if someone keeps chametz, allows chametz to remain in his possession on Pesach, even if he doesn't eat it, he violates two prohibitions. As it says, you should not see chametz, you should not see soor, which means a leavening agent, like a, it's really like something like a, 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 a like a sourdough. You should not see it in all of your borders. And it says that leavening agents should not be found in your homes. And he says that the Isra of Chametz itself, the prohibition of the actual leavened bread, and the prohibition of the leavening agent, are, are which causes something to become leavened, are all one. 
the next halacha says that one does not receive lashes for this prohibition. <laughs> Excuse me. Of La Yamatse, unless one goes out of his way and he buys chametz on Pesach, or he makes chametz on Pesach. He allows it to become chametz. But if he had chametz before Pesach, and Pesach comes, he doesn't remove the, the chametz, he still violates these two prohibitions. However, he does not receive lashes in ancient times. That would be the punishment for this type of a sin. Why doesn't he receive lashes? Um, because he didn't commit any action. It, it, it was a passive act. And, uh, however, the rabbis still said he should receive lashes because he is being rebellious. So it's a it's a sin of uh, it's a re- even he committed a biblical sin, and so the rabbis would enact rabbinically enacted lashes. Um, so the next thing is chametz shavar of a pesach also benoya laolam. If a Jew kept chametz. Um, over Pesach, then he can never have benefit from that. That's a a rabbinical rule. That uh, it's a rabbinical um, injunction. A, a a kanas means a a fine, and because one violated this this prohibitions. Even if it was by accident or for, by force, this way a person should not keep chametz and and have benefit from it after Pesach. Um, so we remove ourselves from these you know, uh, by doing various things. We can sell the chametz. We can we declare the chametz nullified and so. Forth. Alright, I don't really have time to go on. Alright, thank you for watching. God bless. Please like, share, and subscribe.